Welcome to Home Farm. Today, we're in our back garden, and that's Kirsten's domain. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be adding some color, and we're going to be adding some flowers to our garden. So Kirsten, what's the plan? The plan is to put some of our own personality into this garden, which we inherited a couple of years ago. Um, pretty much everything that you see in this garden um, is what we um, took on from the previous owners. Um, some of it is uh, fantastic and we love it. Uh, there is a huge amount of um, evergreen shrubs. Um, there is quite a lot of these tropical kind of grasses, which I love and has got humongous since we moved in. This was half the size when we moved in and now it's taller than Mars, so it's really fantastic. I love it. And there's a banana plant in the back there. There's some really, really great things. The one thing that this garden is severely lacking is flowers. I have really hardly anything that I can cut and put in the kitchen and I'm really missing some color and some flowers. So we have been down to the garden center. It has been long awaited for me. I have just been so desperate mm. to do this for two years. And we went today and we finally got some flowers and some really exciting things. So I'm really looking forward to transforming the garden and getting it a little bit more colorful. Colorful. Let's see what we've got. that we've just picked up from the garden center and as you can see they're really colorful we've got some fantastic tropical colors going on here um, but just to give you we'll go through them and we'll make sure that we tell you exactly what we purchased and the name and variety of every single one just to give you an idea of our actual back garden though it's it's a, a rectangle it's uh, long and it goes down to a wall at the end it's half gravel and half uh, lawn uh, we put the lawn in and Everything that you can see um, on the fence line is what was inherited. And as you can see, there is no color there whatsoever with regards to um, flowers. Everything is shrubs and mostly evergreen, which is really fantastic but uh, for the winter, but not so pretty for the summer. Um, we put the lavender pathway in. Um, which is really lovely, but it's struggling, it's taking a while, it got flooded last year, but it's coming back, and we put in this herb garden. So we've done the herb garden and the pathway, but pretty much everything else is, um, is what we've taken on. So we really, really feel like we want to actually put some colour into those flower borders and into those flower beds, and have something, as I said, that we can pick and use inside the house. So let's go through the, the flowers that we've purchased. So this is a uh, penstemon, this is garnet absolutely gorgeous pink i love how deep and colorful it is it's beautiful um this one is oops this is african queen um, again what we're going to do is we're going to plant african queen along with the um, penstemon garnet so you're going to get like something like this effect so it's really going to have some nice contrast now we've also got the uh, nymphophia john Benari, which is going to come up with a be this beautiful orange flower, and that's going to be planted near the banana plant. We've got a Diggy Plexus Illumination Raspberry. Um, that's quite small at the moment, but we're expecting a really nice long, tall flower from that one. I've got to say, a lot of the plants that we've chosen are actually quite, they've got quite a lot of height to them, and we've deliberately done that because they're going to be on the front of the border, and we just want something that can really withstand the amount of greenery and shrubbery that's behind it. And with the amount, when you think that there's going to be huge bushes and greenery behind this, we think that the, the colour will be higher up. I want to kind of see it, I don't want it to be off on the floor. This is Delphinium Black Knight, and I just love this colour. I've actually planted out some uh, blue Mr. Fokker, watch how you say it, um, a blue anemone this year and I've actually put it on, on my pots but I haven't had that many come up yet so they're still on their way up but um, they are also this colour and I just love this blue. It's so deep and strong and vibrant and I just think it's going to look so fantastic against a, a light green evergreen bush. We've got the Lapis Lazuli Agapanthus and you know you just can't go wrong with this can you it is just such a gorgeous color 
I really am a sucker for lavenders and blue flowers. I think they're so unusual and they they just look so great inside our house. I think I don't know if it's just because we've got a lot of greys and blues going on in our house, but I, they just I just love them. They're just so calming and vibrant and it's lovely to look at. This is a, a choice from Mars. Um, it is blue, so um, I'm very happy with the choice. But he really wanted it because he really liked the leaves. They are really vibrant and they're really bushy. Um, I suppose they kind of look a little bit like mint leaves, but they are really nice. Um, it's a Labellia syphilitica. Um, apologies if I pronounce anything incorrectly. Um, but that's going to also get some really nice, strong, vibrant blue flowers on it. Geranium Roseanne. It's just going to be a floor, uh, floor flower, just something to go along the edge of the border, but just works so beautiful, beautifully with all these colours, so just something to tuck in. I have to be honest, I have never been a massive fan of fuchsias. I don't know why. I kind of, whenever I have seen them um, in my childhood, they were normally dead or dying in a uh, hanging basket, so I'm not a massive fan of them. But... Um, I thought it was really nice to see one that was really big and bushy that would go actually in the ground. But I have to say, I just love the colour of this fuchsia. Again, it's that really nice hot pink, but with this kind of purple um, centre. I just think it is so graceful, so beautiful, and a really, really nice colour. And with the colour palette that we're going for, this was pretty much a no-brainer. So this would definitely look good and a really nice border filler as well. And look at the amount of flowers on it. It's prolific. It's fantastic. And I know it's not really a cut flower, but I kind of thought, well, actually, just even that one stem, just in a small, small vase, bedside table, so pretty. Okay, so that's it. We've managed to sneak it in before the sun went down. Um, we've shown you everything that we've purchased. I don't think we're going to get it um, in tomorrow, unfortunately. We're expecting thunderstorms and lots and lots of rain, so I'm going to put them all here, make sure that they're all, especially these delphiniums, are really protected and we don't need them breaking or snapping in half. Um, and I'm definitely going to stake them when I plant them. And then we'll come back to them probably in a couple of days or a day. Uh, I'll keep an eye on them and, and look after them and then we'll finally be able to show you when we start to get them in the ground. It's been a week, I can't believe it. We had, we expected just to have the weekend of rain. We ended up having seven days of rain. It was almost continuous. It was pretty miserable. Um, but uh, what was good was that it was just a very light drizzle um, and then to a heavier drizzle. So we never had torrential rain. So nothing really got flooded. So that was really great. So I could actually just leave the plants out. Um, I actually left them in one spot, moved them to another. So they just had a nice continuous um, shower without being really over flooded in their pots. Um, so today we have come out, finally the sun is shining and we've been uh, tidying up. Um, getting the place ready for our planting. We've done a nice cut of the lawn. We haven't finished trimming the edges yet, but we've done the lawn and we've just gone around and weeded some of the flower beds. And so now we're gonna get, uh, we've positioned the plants into the areas that we want. Things might move around as and when we're planting, but we'll speed that up for you. And um, so you might see us kind of rejig a few things, but we think that we've got things in the right place. I'm really excited about these uh, delphiniums. They're so gorgeous, I love them. Um, 
they're all labeled the same, Black Knight. Um, but the only thing I would say is that these are really a nice deep purple and this one for some reason is a really really strong blue so I am not sure whether it's been mislabeled um, by our local garden centre but it doesn't really matter I still love it and I still think it looks gorgeous. <laughs> So today we're going to be um, going for some compost or putting some compost into each of the potting hole holes because we recently did a soil test and uh, our soil here is pH 7 and 8, it's really heavy and alkaline so we need to start to rebalance the soil. Um, so I'm going to make sure that every time we plant anything we put in some nice compost so that it's got some good nutrients in it already um, and then I'm going to put a sprinkle of some slow release um, organic feed. Um, into each potting hole as well to boost the nutrients. Uh, this one is 100% natural organic miracle Grow. Um, the MPK on it is uh, 855, so um, we do need more nitrogen in our particular soil and gardening, so that should be really good. And this is, as I said, a three month feed just says it's high performance, 100% natural and organic, granular, plant food, um, glorious on plants and gentle on nature, we hope. And it does say that it's pet, child and bee friendly. So we're gonna give that a try, I've never used it before, so we just purchased that. Um, so we'll see how that performs. And then for some of the um, holes where I know that we have a bit of a drainage issue where the heavy, um, clay um, alkaline soil really has a tendency to hold on to the water in the winter. I'm going to make sure I put in quite a bit of potting grit to really try and improve the drainage in those areas, especially in the delphiniums. So delphiniums do have a tendency to get like a root rot in the winter when they're dormant. So once um, they finish flowering and it goes into the winter, they'll um, go down to ground level and that's when they have a tendency to get a root rot. And then in the spring, they have a tendency to get a mildew. So it's really important that they have lots of drainage and that um, in the spring, we can also just do a mildew spray to um, protect them. And I think that that's pretty much all delphiniums require. I've never planted delphiniums. In fact, I don't think I've ever planted any of these plants before. So they're all new to me and it's going to be a bit of a learning curve, but I'm excited. They look really lovely and I like all of them. Um, <sighs> Leopold's obviously going to be in charge of uh, the kneeling pad. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so it's been a long day. It's been really, really fantastic weather. So that's been really good. It's pretty windy, um, as you can probably tell, um, but it's lovely and fresh and cool. We've managed to finish up planting up this uh, flower bed and uh, the corner and the fuchsias under the eucalyptus tree. Uh, so we'll walk through that and have a look. It was quite challenging. There was a lot of rocks in the ground, um, which we didn't know about, but we've managed to get all of everything that we wanted has come in. Uh, this is the extra uh, geranium roseanne that I mentioned earlier. Um, we actually pulled out some uh, little baby campanulas that we had um, in another container um, to just include in this flower bed um, with the uh, nymphophia and that's going to come up to about here so it's going to be really nice and tall and we'll be able to see that from the garden rim and the beautiful kind of African stem flowers on there. Uh, bamboo we've given a trim and we've just tidied up the flower bed and put some of the extra fuchsias that we had in here. I love this agapanther in the corner. I think that that hit of blue is so nice and just really um, it's so vibrant and it makes quite a dark corner quite interesting especially as we've got quite a lot of yellow going on in the other leaves so it's just a really nice hit of color along with these really small little pink flowers as well so made the corner far more interesting and something to look at again from the other end of the garden it really stands out and is really noticeable so really love that and really pleased with that and the fuchsias underneath the eucalyptus tree I just love Leah. I love the fact that it's actually quite a similar leaf in shape um, but we have these beautiful bell-shaped flowers at the end I think that this is the army it's got two varieties here I think we've got the army one and the and Miss Poplar look at that color isn't that beautiful that pink and that purple violet is just so gorgeous and really nice again underneath this eucalyptus tree I've also tidied up the um, ivy a little bit uh, it's obviously a floor creeper and it really goes so far um, it just wants to creep for ages and really big giant ivy leaves which are quite pretty actually but um, this just needs to be controlled a bit so we put them up, up on the, the fence line and we'll run them and trail them along the fence to really darken up that fence line as well. We've managed to get everything in at that end of the garden I think it's going to really look good we're going to get some nice vibrant colors going on down there and make it look far more interesting for when we're sitting right at the other end we'll be able to see lots of different pops of color really excited to see that happen so as you can see we've still got these blue delphiniums to go in I've also got some hot pink penstemons to go in and some lovely orange African queens so please subscribe and ring the bell and then we'll be able to show you us planting these in and do a final tour of the entire back garden.